When it comes to digital interfaces, we humans are pretty odd creatures. Hey friends, in this short video, I'm gonna help you bring your dark mode to the next level. We're gonna talk light, shadows and colors, and we're gonna solve most of the problems that designers make while attempting dark mode. But before we get to this, let's answer the fundamental question. Does your product even need a dark mode? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. And if you want more tip videos like this one, just subscribe to this channel by clicking a button somewhere down below. So does your product need dark mode? My answer is gonna be yes. But not for the reason that most people think. The argument that it's easy on the eyes hasn't been truly really totally proven yet. There is very inconclusive research about that. Some say it helps your eyes to actually be more relaxed, but some say it just doesn't work. So that effect is pretty marginal at best. Some also say that dark mode helps all its screens save battery life and yeah, it kind of does, but the difference there is just so small that it's barely noticeable. On some displays and brightness levels, it can also cause a ghosting effect. The pixels don't have enough time to turn back on and that leaves a smudgy blurry text as you scroll. The real reason why you should do dark mode in your product is that it got popular. And because it got popular, people now simply expect your product to have a dark mode option. So best to provide it to them, right? Here's how you can deliver that in style. <laughs> Switching from light mode to dark mode sadly can't happen with just replacing white with black. You need to tweak all the other colors too. If your brand is using a very saturated color, like the blue that we see here, it will be really hard to look at in dark mode. The solution is simple. Take your brand color and desaturate it by 20 to 30%. You likely don't need to tweak anything else. High saturation and dark mode simply don't match too well. Here is a set of colors in light mode. Here is what happens when we switch the background to dark. Kinda jarring, right? But just that one, the saturation trick, makes the colors appear a lot more friendly and visible. Another thing to remember is to have a theme of the dark shades that you're gonna use in your app. Unless it's completely black and white, but that's very rarely the case. If you have an accent color, like a blue, it's really good to add a hint of that blue to your grays. That way, it will feel consistent and just nicer to look at. That almost invisible change does wonders to the perception of how great your design is. People will actually think that it's better than it is if you do just this one thing. Let there be light. When it comes to digital interfaces, we humans are pretty odd creatures. To learn to use them better, we created skeuomorphism and imagined wooden bookcases on a flat display just to make it easier for us to understand. Illusions like this are creating little shortcuts in our minds to make it a little bit faster to process what we're looking at. Dark mode is the same. Most people hold their phones at a 45 degree angle, unless you're one of those people who hold it like this. In reality, it's a much healthier way to hold it for your neck, but it just looks silly. Anyway, 45 degree angle, and we have this burning star in space above us called the sun. It kinda shines down, you know? So naturally, when we're presented with layers of any kind, things that are the closest to the light source will be the brightest. Things further back will be darker, and so on. This color gradation is really important in both light and dark modes. If it's broken and the darkest color is on top, we still can use the app, but it just feels weird. Let's not make it weird, okay? The trick I use to those layers is simply adjusting the brightness. Assuming the background has a brightness between 0 and 5, simply start with 10, 20, 30 and 40. In most cases, you only need three layers anyway. Okay, we talked about light, so let's talk about shadows. Let's start with the basics. Naturally, all the surfaces cast shadows, so if a light surface is casting a shadow, a dark surface is doing that as well. We are, however, limited by what our screens can do. That's why shadows are an exception in dark mode. I believe they're often not necessary, as just the layer brightness successfully shows depth. However, if you plan to use them, avoid adding them to very dark surfaces, as it will simply make the bottom edge look blurry. When it comes to blur, we only like it in the background, like this. We don't want them in our shadow bottom edge. If you're using lighter shades of dark mode, you can add the shadow or skip it. The difference is very small. One thing to remember though, is to not add the shadow to all the elements on the screen. It's best to add them to the largest ones, like the cards and the most important ones, like the button. 
In that case, the shadow can also have a bit of blue cast over it to make it look cool. And that's it for today. If you want me to do more videos like this, leave a comment. And if you want to learn proper hierarchy in user interfaces, here is one video that's gonna help you with exactly that. Cheers!